الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على السيد الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه نجوم خدا قادة التغى ما بعد اللهم اغفر لنا ومشايخنا وعلمنا ما جهلنا من القول والعمل وجنبنا الفواحش والمعاصي والخطايا والزلل اللهم آثرنا واكثرنا واصلح لنا شاننا كله لا إله إلا أنت My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today is the day of Eid and it is a day which we celebrate and we are all happy in it. But, but it is also a day of, of sorrow because of the situation in Palestine and in Gaza. We should remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine and remember that they are going under a very difficult time. They are experiencing a lot of difficulties and when we look at the history of the Islamic world, there is nothing which would even suggest that the Muslim community did this type of genocide against people. I will give two examples in the short time I have got and I will mention it slowly, shortly and very concisely in the khutbah as well. One example is the Holy Prophet وسلم, when he was ready to conquer Makkah Mukarramah. And remember, those are the enemies who have fought all their lives to destroy the small community which the Holy Prophet ﷺ had created and to kill the Holy Prophet ﷺ himself. When the army of the Muslim arrived, near Mecca, Abu Sufyan, the leader of Quraysh, the leader of the enemy, came out to look at how many people were with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So while he was roaming around, he was captured by the Muslimin and he was brought to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told, told his uncle Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib to show Abu Sufyan the extent of the army of the Muslimin. So the next day, the whole army is passing through in front of the eyes of the leader of the, the enemy. When the tribe of Khazraj arrived and Saad ibn Ubada, the leader of Khazraj, one tribe 
of the Ansar, the Ansar were divided into two tribes, one, Aus, the leader was Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad, and the second one was Khazraj, Sa'ad ibn Ubadah was the leader. So, Sa'ad ibn Ubada told Abu Sufyan, Al-Yawm al-Yawm al-Malhama, Al-Yawm al-Tustahallu al-Ka'ba. Today is the day of revenge, and we will take the full revenge from you people. When Abu Sufyan arrived in front of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Abu Sufyan, Ya Muhammad ibn Abdullah, O Muhammad ibn Abdullah, do you want to take revenge from your tribe? So the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, la la la. So he narrated whatever Sa'ad ibn Mu'badah had said, al yawm yawm al اليوم تستحل الكعبة. The Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied لا 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 لا. اليوم يوم المرحمة. Today is the day of mercy. And this is why the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was called رحمة للعالمين. Not رحمة للمسلمين فقط. Not Rahmatul Lil Insaniya Fakat, Rahmatul Lil Alameen for the whole universe. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Rahma. Then what did the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He removed Sa'ad ibn Ubada from his post as the leader of the Ansar, of the Khazraj, and put his son as the leader. When the Islamic army entered Ka'batullah and Makkah al Mukarramah, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had made an announcement that anybody who enters the house of Abu Sufyan, his life will be spared. Anybody who enters the house of Hakim ibn Hizam, his life will be spared. Anybody who enters Al-Masjid Al-Haram, who his life will be spared. Anybody who stays in his own house, his life will be spared. Meaning that the army of Islam is entering Masjid al-Haram and the whole of Makkah al-Mukarramah and nobody is killed. That is the beauty of Islam. And if you look at history, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu was he, when he was invited after Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah conquered Shah and the leaders of the Christendom wanted to see the leader of the Muslimin. So he arrived walking while his servant was on the horse. And this was what written in the old books of Christianity. So Umar ibn al-Khattab was given the, 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 the key of Bayt al-Maqdis. He went to the church of the Holy Sepulchre and the time of Asr came. The patriarch told him, pray here. He said, la la la. Adhab wa usalli ila al-kharij. I will pray outside. The reason is that my people will claim this land. If I pray here, then he asked the 
Christian, Roman, Byzantine ruler of the city, where are the Jewish community? They have been all slaughtered. No, no. Give them, call them. This is not the way to do it. Call them back. And the Jewish community was implemented in Baytul Maqdis by Umar ibn al-Khattab. Many years later, when in 1095 of the Christian era, Pope Urban II made the announcement in Clermont-Ferrand in France, in the southern up, south of France, that we should take Jerusalem back from the heathens, meaning the non-believers. The whole Christendom raised up. And in July, 15 July, 1099, they entered Baytul Mahdis. An Egyptian leader was the leader of time. They slaughtered everybody from any denomination, meaning be it Muslims, be it Christian from another denomination, Armenian, Orthodox Christian. All the whole, the whole Jewish community was slaughtered. The synagogue, they entered into the synagogue of Baytul Maqdis, the whole synagogue was burned down. When the horses were mounting on the Temple Mount, the stairs were filled with blood so much that the blood would reach the, the knees of the horses. I am shortening it because I have four minutes to tell you. Ladies were killed because there was, they put a spear in the, in the belly of ladies and children because there was a, a, a rumor which had come out that they had taken the gold and eaten it to retrieve it later. Exactly one 87 years later, in 1187, Salahuddin al Ayyubi defeated the armies of Christian than the Crusaders in Hattin. Now there was a debate that 87 years before, which is not many people who are still alive, what should we do when we enter Baytul Maqdis victorious? Many of his advisors were telling him, let's kill everybody. Because that is the revenge. This is what they did to us. Salahuddin al Ayyubi said, no, no, no. That is not the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he announced that anybody who lives, who wants to leave Baytul Maqdis is allowed to leave on the condition that they small, pay a small amount of money. So the rich people, they manage to go out. The poor people could not because they didn't have the money. So he ordered his own, he himself gave so much money for the relief of those who wanted to go. His brother also paid for thousands of people and he ordered his general to tell Anybody, any poor Christian who wants to leave, to leave the city could to leave it, to, to pay for that. The advisor of the king Salahuddin al-Ayyubi 
told him that the patriarch of the church of the Holy Sepulcher is putting all the gold of the church on camels and taking out. And this is the ownership of the, of the Christian people. Salardin al replied, I will not stop him because a rumor will spread that Salahuddin al is taking the money of the people. Salahuddin al then made a survey. 50,000 people were living before 1099 in, in Baytul Maqdis in Quds. And only 5,000 were remaining. The whole population was completely destroyed and decimated. They were killed, 45,000 people. It reminds us about today's situation. Salahuddin al made an made a decree that any Jewish person who wants to return to Baytul Maqdis or Al-Khalil Hebron will receive a stipend from Bodhifa, from the king's own income. And until later, until the Ottoman Empire was broken, the Jewish community were receiving that money from the Muslim coffers. He put, Nuruddin Zanji had prepared two members when he would get back Baytul Maqdis and Al Khalil Hebron, those two members, Salahuddin Al Ayyubi, put them one in Al Quds, Masjid Al Aqsa, the second one in Al Khalil. When a terrorist entered Masjid Al Aqsa and burned that member, there is a replica now of that member in Masjid Al-Aqsa. But if you want to visit the original member which had been made by Nuruddin Zanji, visit Al-Khalil. So this is how Muslims show humanity to the world. And even if people are cruel to us and they show the extremity of cruelty to us. We follow the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is rahmatun lil alameen. May Allah ta'ala give us the tawfiq to know how to follow the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every aspect of our lives. Wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين